Have you seen a charter party form? Do you know what are the elements in a voice charter party or a time charter party? In this video, we'll be looking at an actual charter party form and the relevant clauses into it. So let's get into the video, shall we? Hey, what's up? My name is Akash from Shipsco, bringing you the best platform to learn about the commercial shipping subjects. In the Chartering 101 series, we have seen the basics, we have seen the chartering process, we have seen some additional terms and legal terms used in chartering. In this lecture, we will be dealing with a charter party form, we'll be seeing actual charter party form, and we'll be seeing some relevant clauses. So let's get into it. If you're new here, consider subscribing it at any point of the video. Also check out the notes and links in the description below. If you like my content guys, you can always get to go into my website and get the whole comprehensive lectures downloaded. The whole package consists of uh, past ICS papers, past solved ICS papers too, and my own lecture notes, which will help you to understand the lecture much better. So let's get into the video, shall we? Hi guys, welcome to Chartering 101. So in lecture five today, we're going to study about the elements of the void charter party form and elements of the time charter party form. Before we dive into the topic, I would like to start with an example in which it will make you understand easier what are we going to study today. So let's have an imaginary scenario here where I have cars, like I'm, I'm owner of many cars and you want to come and get a car rented for a week. What are the basic elements of a rental agreement between you and me? The basic elements of rental agreement between us will be like if I give you a car for a week, let's say if I'm giving it to you on this Sunday, I'll be expecting the car return on the next Sunday. Okay. If I try to give you car with the whole petrol being filled up, it's, I'll, I'll make sure that whenever I get the car back from you, it will be filled up at a certain level as well. So it should be same. So these are the small, small things which you have to take into consideration when we form a rental agreement. How much money am I going to charge you? Am I going to charge you on a daily basis? Or am I going to charge you a lump sum amount? Am I providing your driver? So these are small, small things which we take into consideration. Similarly, when we try to shift the whole focus from a rental agreement, where we have a ship and the ship is being chartered between a ship owner and a charterer. Okay. So this is how the charter party comes into play. So, as far as the void charter party is concerned, we'll be looking into GenCom. Okay. So, what are the elements of the void charter party? So, it consists of a preamble. Preamble is an introduction where it has place, date, name and domic domicile of the contracting parties, name and brief description of the vessel because we need to know what kind of vessel it is and the condition of the vessel. The second thing will be the cargo description in which there will be information on the commodity which needs to be carried, storage factor, minimum maximum quantities of cargo to be carried and whose option, what are the loading and discharging places. As we know guys, before we get into the void charter party, I'll just revise it that void charter party is meant for the specific voyage in which the all the costs are taken care by the ship owner. Loading port, are there any rotations in the voyage? We'll just have a brief look. Then we have discharging place and port orders of rotation. Then ladies and uh, ladies and cancelling. The spread of the days during which the vessel is supposed to be presented at the first load port. This, this is what the lay can is. It needs to reach before that certain date. What is the freight? Cost of loading and discharging. Discharging. Which party? to appoint and pay for the cargo handling at each port. So if you remember, I did mention terms called as liner or FIO, FIO, ST. If the charter party consists of liner terms, the cost will be borne by the ship owner. But if it consists of FIO in dry cargo charter party or FIOS or FIOST, the cost of cargo handling cost will be borne by the charterer. Note of readiness, I'll be looking into the NOR in our upcoming lectures, loading and discharging rates need to be present in the void charter party form. Exempted periods when the late time won't count. Demerage and dispatch, daily amount payable by charters in the event of maximum. Notices, are there any notices given? Ships gear, grab, discharge, shift or demand, damage, overtime, if the overtime is applicable, who is going to pay for it? 
shifting seaworthy because there are costs which again consist of shifting the vessel. So these are the costs pertaining to the shifting. So who is going to take the, these costs? Cargo separate separations and tallying, dues and taxes, port agents, ship owner responsible for the paying of the port costs and agency fees, bills of lading, light ring where the cargo is light, lightning is necessary, general average. Then there is something called a strikes, exemptions. What are the exemptions provided? What are commissions? So there are two things which we which we studied. What is address commission, which is from the charters, and brokerage commission is from the broker's behalf. Protecting clauses, new Jason clause, PNI bunker clause, clause paramount, boat to blame collision clause are coming under the protection clause. Lien and cessation, ice protect owner master from having to sail in an area of ice, war risk. Owner give the right to refuse to allow the vessel sail in the war area. And finally, there are so-called signatures into a charter party form. Since we have understood what elements of a charter, what and why charter party are there, let's have a look at a proper charter party form. So I do have it here. This is your GenCom. GenCom is mainly used for the spot fixtures. This is where the ship broker, this, this is where the owner's uh, information is put in. Charters, place and date, vessel's name, Dead weight, the information about the vessel. Where is it positioned right now? Expected rate load, loading port or load port, discharge port information. What cargo it is? Freight rate, freight payment, the currency method. State of the cargo handling should be used or not. Agents, loading, discharging, damage rate, freight taxes, loan arbitration, lay time, lay time. Cancelling dates, general average to be adjusted, brokerage will be mentioned in this box. And additional clauses if they need to be present. And finally, it finishes with the signature of owners and signature of charterers. So this is the part one. This is by the recommendation of the Baltic and the International Maritime Council. This is the part one, guys. This is how the BEMCO has printed this charter party form. Now, the second one is the Part two. So now this is the section where it consists of relevant clauses. So I'll just you know give you a brief glance of how it looks like and what clauses are. What are the owner's responsibilities you see? What are the deviation? What is deviation clause? Can the vessel deviate? And if it can, when can it deviate? If it needs to assist any other vessels of there, there is a safety of life at sea or property, then the deviation clause comes into play. Payment of free. The prepaid on delivery loading and discharging what are the cost and risks related to that cargo handling gear then we have pseudo damage then we have lay time the clause number six is lay time where it's telling you you know how much total lay time for loading and discharging commence when when shall the lay time shall commence demerage if the charter is taking excess amount of time as stipulated in the charter party he is subjected to damage. That means he is supposed to pay a fine to the ship owner. How much is the damage? What are the lien? What are the cancellation clauses? Then we have bills of lading, boat to blame collision clauses. In case of collision, if there is a collision, who all parties are supposed to come into play? Who will take the liabilities? Who will pay for the amount? What are the losses? So that is mentioned in the boat to blame collision clause. One of the again, one of the more protection clauses are general average, new Jason clause, where are taxes due, agency, who appoints the agency, brokerage, as stipulated in box number 24. It all depends upon how much has been mentioned in box number 24. And if you go up, you can see here, it gives you an understanding of what can be here. Now, uh, then general strikes, war risks. General ice clause, port of loading, and where if any if any dispute happens, where will it happen? In what accordance? It's all provided in the law and arbitration clause. So I recommend you guys that you know you have a read. I'll just put all of these material in the description below, or you can always go to my website and get it downloaded for yourself and have a read. 
let me know in the comment section below what you understand what what is your understanding if you stumble across any any clause i'll definitely try to help you out with this so now let's get back to the chill lecture so this is what the voyage charter party looks like so let's look into the elements of the time charter party form so before i get into time charter party i'll like i would like you guys to recollect what we studied in our lecture one in time charter party th there are certain costs okay so there's a ship owner there's a charter the variable costs are borne by the charter and the fixed costs are borne by the ship owner what are the variable costs variable costs are all the costs which are pertaining to a voyage if he makes up if he's you know undergoing a voyage all the costs are taken care by the charter and similarly the fixed costs are borne by the ship owner so now in this time charter body form we will be looking into preamble which consists of place dates and names of the principles of the dom domiciles of the contracting parties vessels description this is very important duration of the period because now in time charter party the vessel is being delivered to charter for a certain amount of time so that is why this clause comes into play duration of period of trip then trading intentions where do you want to get it traded there are at times as we discussed certain ship owners would not like their vessels to go to certain areas so the ship owner will mention that this these areas are excluded cargo intentions if there any limit on are there any exclusions on the cargo which to be carried details of cargoes which cannot be carried as i said the vessel's condition undertake by the what is the vessel condition looks like owner's responsibilities what all things owner will provide similarly there will be some charter responsibilities as well delivery and redelivery again in time charter party as we know that the vessel is taken at one point and then the vessel is supposed to get delivered at a certain place so that is where this clause comes into play places of delivery readably ladies cancelling notice given by owners prior delivery notice given by charters prior delivery what are bunkers bunkers again one, is one of the most important factors so bunker on delivery bunker on, bunker on redelivery when a vessel is given to charter there is a survey bunker survey carried out that is where it that is where the parties relevant parties come to know that this is the stipulated amount of bunker at that point and the the charter or the owner will make sure that he gets the same amount when it is being redelivered so there is a bunker redelivery survey as well who will take up that cost all these things comes under the bunker clause hire amount of hire as we know that in hire the the charter pays in per day pro rata of hire what are the reasons for off hire we'll be looking into all of these clauses in depth as we go ahead vessels performance vessels maintenance cargo claims masters officer what are the duty of the ships officers log books they are supposed to write down the weather routing because it is interrelated to the vessel's performance if the vessel performance drop there might be an you know issue that the vessel might not be able to meet the desired performance as stipulated in the charter party that is where the charter might ask the ship owner to send the snapshots of the log book where in each and you know we try to log it especially the ship the the officer on watch logs the weather on the log books and that is what it is checked then as i said in the events of log books and independent reports disagree the independent reports prevail super cargo charter has the right to appoint a super cargo super cargo is a charterer's representative on a ship who is specifically appointed by the charterer for a specific task accommodation and food may be provided to the super cargo for which the charterer may be charged a certain amount per day okay guys then we have pollution salvage expenses laying up stipulated owners and charters provide in case of if the vessel is laid up arbitration in case of dispute between the owners and charters lien assignments charter rights to sublet the vessel to another charter again it here you know the rider and relet clause comes into play that if the vessel is being chartered to sub charter 
can he do that or not and if he is doing that he needs to follow the original set of orders between the charters and the ship owner what are the exemptions Re requisitions arrangements bill of ladings stevedo damage what happens in the in case of stevedo damage commissions again address commission brokerage commission is one of the most important things too war risk clauses protection clauses are always there in the charter party and finally there are signatures so now let's have a look at the time charter which we'll be looking into nyp 93 this is a standard charter party form used for the time charter in the dribble segment okay so this is how it looks like this is the as i said the first page where it says the charter description of the vessel is given all the description is provided here the duration as we know it's a time charter party so duration is one of the most important ones delivery again where it's supposed to be delivered the vessel on hire survey it needs to undergo the on hire survey in which the quantity of the bunkers are checked what is the condition the, who takes care of all of these expenses are mentioned in this what are the cargo exclusions dangerous cargo what are the cargo exclusions what are the trading limits as per the owners to the charters and charter is supposed to follow it owners to provide what all things owner are supposed to provide under this agreement charters to provide similarly the charter responsibilities are laid out in this section performance of the vessel is again one of the most important things bunkers are again there rate of hire and redelivery areas and notice this where it's supposed to be redelivered what is the rate of hire hire payments payment section grace period what is the grace period given last payment of hire cash advances and then we have different berths space availability super cargo and means as i said you know super cargo is the representative of the charter he comes on board so what he has even the victualling account for himself so how much is the rate per meal he will be charged so that amount will be taken out in the calculation sailing orders and logs delivery and cancelling off hire we will be looking into off hire clauses in depth as we go ahead in our next lecture sublet clause sublet is also important guys so once the charter sublets it to a sub charterer what are the responsibilities he should take into consideration dry docking of the vessel again dry toilet docking is one of the major cost and since you know who is going to take care of this total loss in case of exemptions what are the liberties liens salvage in case of salvage operations what is the general average there are certain conditions for general general average too which i won't be touching right now but yeah the navigation cargo claims cargo gear and lights crew overtime who pays for the crew overtime if you know they are undergoing extra work bills of lading what are the protective clauses these are the protective clauses and which should be incorporated which also should be included in the bill of lading clause paramount bloat to blame collision clause the same clause if in case of collision who are the responsible parties here who will pay for the liability the loss new jersey clause us trade drug clause again war clauses war cancellation clause ice clause requisition stevedo damage what happens in the case of the stevedo damage cleaning of holes taxes charter scholars there are a lot of things lot of different clauses i can't go into depth right now with the time constraint guys so then documentation stowages laid up returns smuggling what happens in case of smuggling commission address commission this is their charters address commission arbitration if in case of dispute what will happen what laws are supposed to be followed so this is how it looks like nyp 93 guys so again guys i mean there is a lot of study that is why i recommend you guys go through all of these charter party clauses and have in your have your own understanding let me know in the comment section below if what was your understanding and if you're facing any issues in that with this guys i would like to finish off my lecture 5 i hope you liked it 
question of the day. Uh, I would like you guys to revisit the Charter Party form. You can get it downloaded in the description below. Uh, if you have any queries, you can always pop a question up in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you like the video, guys. And we will be covering a lot of concepts in the upcoming lecture slides. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. In the next lecture, we'll be looking into a more elements what we studied today. And we'll be looking a bit more closer in depth. Until next time, ShipScope is bringing you the best platform to learn about the commercial shipping subjects. Keep on learning as much as possible. And we will talk soon.